I don't know about you, but I rushed to update to macOS Tahoe the second it dropped. I was honestly sold on that liquid glass look. It just feels so updated and modern and futuristic, but I did kind of notice that it starts to slow down some things and even cause a little bit of freezing. So I did some personal digging on my personal MacBook Pro and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the top five macOS Tahoe issues that you might be running into and ways that you could fix it. And of course, before we continue, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for more Pro Mac tips. So with every big annual update from Apple, there are bound to be some issues on launch. Some of the things that I've read online in Reddit forums or from other places is that, you know, there's a glitchy UI now, apps are freezing and crashing, and that there's a sudden spike in storage usage. Some people are even reporting that their Mac is running at like half the speed as when they were running on Mac OS Sequoia. So after some research and digging, I did find that there were like three major reasons why this could be happening. Number one is probably that there's a massive re-indexing after installation. Number two is that there's probably just heavy new system caching. And the possible third reason is that the apps that we usually use are just not optimized for Mac OS Tahoe yet. Furthermore, if your Mac is carrying old system junk from the last OS, it's not going to make the case any easier. So for that part, at least, I really recommend this program called Clean My Mac to really solve that issue. With this program, I really like to use the system cleanup feature because it always just finds things that are lurking deep inside my hard drive that I didn't even know existed. And with the simple push of a button, it gets rid of all that system junk and it frees up a lot of storage in the process. It not only made my life easier, but it did the same for so many users out there. And Apple even rated this program as top 25 amazing apps of 2025. So I think that you should totally check this program out. And if you want, there's a download link in the description box below to get you started on a seven day free trial if you want. All right, so let's start talking about those top five Mac OS Tahoe issues that you could be running into. And number one being that the liquid glass interface slows our computer down. Even though this particular aesthetic update is mainly the reason why a lot of us upgrade to Mac OS Tahoe, it does typically slow down things because there's a lot of animation and graphics involved in it. But if it's slowing down your personal Mac, then here's a way that you can solve this. Go to System Settings, Accessibility, Display, Reduce Transparency to On. And with the solution, you should see a noticeable difference in the performance of your Mac. And if you want to speed up your Mac even more, I do have a useful video that'll pop up somewhere around this corner of this window. Issue number two is that if you have a MacBook, you start to notice that your battery is draining a lot faster than usual. With every new update, this tends to be a problem, so here's the solution to fix that. Go to System Settings settings and then battery, and then find any power hungry apps that are always active. You can even optimize your battery charging by navigating to the battery health and turning on optimized battery charging. The third issue that we're going to talk about is that your apps just keep crashing. There's a couple quick fixes for this problem. And the first thing you should check is if there's an update for that particular application. Usually when there's a big Mac OS update, the developers are already ahead of the curve and there's usually an update ready for you already. If your app is freezing, then you could always just force quit it by holding option command escape or right clicking the app icon and clicking force quit. And of course, if all else fails, then just reinstall the application, go ahead and uninstall it and go onto the website or the program that you got that app and then reinstall it back. That's always the classic way of fixing most things. Issue number four is that you notice that your Mac is overheating. This is also a pretty common issue because there's always just new processes happening in the background with every new big Mac OS update. So some practical solutions to watch out for is that your Mac is getting proper airflow. Hopefully you're not operating your computer in hot environments in the sun all the time or underneath a blanket or resting your Mac on a bed or a sofa where the airflow and the air vents don't get enough circulation. Another thing you could do is monitor the usage of your CPU through the activity monitor and quitting any process that is eating up a lot of CPU usage. And of course, you can always close those unwanted tabs on your browser. Those usually take up a lot of CPU. And the last issue we'll talk about is that system data is just taking up too much space. System data is this mysteriously large chunk of data that takes up so much of our storage when we look at our our storage bar in the system settings. And Mac OS Tahoe could be a culprit of that as well. One way of fixing this is to go to Finder, then click Go, hold down the Option key, then choose Library and Caches. And then you could get rid of some cache files through there. You could also remove old backups that are stored on your hard drive, whether they're old Mac backups or iPhone backups. You could also find and delete large and unnecessary files by going to System Settings, then General, then Storage. Then check the storage bar to see what's taking up the most space and review individual sections like Applications or Documents or Downloads to find and remove large or unnecessary files. And just a heads up, that program I mentioned before, Clean My Mac, does have features that will help make this process a whole lot easier. So with all this being said, Mac OS Tahoe, the update itself is not going to break your computer, but it will change some things that might slow it down. And hopefully this video taught you ways of how to fix and resolve those things. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you hit that like button, that subscribe button, and leave a comment down below on what you think. And I will see you in that next video for more Pro Mac tips.